Mormon temple workers have been forbidden from wearing beards since 1951, even though facial hair is not mentioned in the church's handbook and many of its early leaders wore beards. Beards have also been forbidden at Brigham Young University since the 1970s. In the past, beards were associated with hippies and protesters. This is no longer the case, but the standard remains. Carrie Jenkins, a spokeswoman for BYU, says that no one is saying there is anything wrong with beards. It's just part of how we have chosen to represent ourselves. A member of BYU's student council recently asked for a survey to be taken through the school's website regarding this policy, but the survey was soon removed. Jenkins said that this was because the student did not go through the proper process. Lauren Sleem, a communications major from Manchester, decided to remedy the lack of facial hair at BYU by creating BeardCard.com. The site provides a line of t-shirts with images of beards on them, thus allowing anyone who wants to wear a beard to do so in a manner of speaking, even if they attend BYU or work in a Mormon temple. Unlike workers, members who merely go to the Mormon temples are allowed to wear beards. Students at BYU may also be granted an exemption for medical reasons or if they are involved in a dramatic production that requires them to have a beard. Lawmakers in North Carolina have indefinitely tabled a proposed law which would effectively declare the First and Fourteenth Amendments to the U.S. Constitution null and void in their state. The bill was sponsored by Republican Representatives Carl Ford and Harry Warren, both of Rowan County, with support from several other co-sponsors. The bill specifically declares that the state has the right to determine an official state religion, despite years of jurisprudence to the contrary. The bill further insists that federal courts do not have the right to determine what is constitutional, although Article 3, Sections 1 and 2 of said Constitution explicitly contradict this assertion. Warren insists that the bill is only intended to allow Rowan County Commissioners to open their meetings with a prayer after the county lost a lawsuit brought by the ACLU preventing them from continuing their tradition of inaugurating their assemblies with a Christian prayer. The Association of Anti-Watchtower Activists recently posted a video announcing their newly formed organization on YouTube. The video features former Jehovah Witnesses declaring their support for the association and was posted by AAWA President John Cedars, who is also the founder of JWSurvey.org. The video features several authors and activists and is asking for volunteers to help it achieve its goals. According to its website, the association is an organization dedicated to raising awareness of the damaging influences of the Watchtower Society through respectful and well-informed well activism. AAWA is also committed to offering help and support to those who are mentally and emotionally afflicted by the society's teachings and practices in whatever ways it can. Among its complaints, the association's website has put special emphasis on the shunning of relatives, the mishandling of child abuse cases, and the ban on certain forms of treatment with blood. Most of the work done by the organization will be performed by volunteers who already include former Jehovah Witnesses, atheists, and religious believers. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society is the corporation behind the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses. It doesn't matter, Matthew said. I'm not accusing anybody. Of course you are, Marjorie said. To this point, she'd remained silent, but now she came out intending to fight. You're not accusing anyone in particular, maybe, but sure as hell you're saying one of us gave the poison to the priest. If you think it was me or Melvin, I want you to say so now. 
I want to hear you say it, and I want to know why you think it. Is it because Melvin is smarter than you? Is it because Peggy and I were the ones who convinced Dad to cancel his insurance? 